In this video, we will explore the detailed anatomy of the extraocular muscles, focusing on their structure, functions, and the pivotal roles they play in eye movement and visual coordination. We will initiate with an introduction, then proceed to a comprehensive analysis of the rectus and oblique muscles of the eye, concentrating on their anatomy and functions. Before wrapping up, we will explore the details of their blood and nerve supply, emphasizing how these components are crucial for the effective functioning of the extraocular muscles. The term extraocular muscles refers to the group of muscles located outside the eyeball that control its movements. These muscles are vital for directing gaze and are involved in complex eye movements such as saccades, smooth pursuit, and vergence. The extraocular muscles consist of six main muscles, for rectus muscles, these are the medial, superior, lateral, and inferior rectus muscles. Two oblique muscles, these include the superior and inferior oblique muscles. These muscles attach to the sclera, the outer white part of the eyeball. They are innervated by three cranial nerves, the oculomotor nerve mainly, the trochlear nerve and the abducens nerve. The coordination of these muscles is crucial for binocular vision, enabling the eyes to focus on a single point in space and facilitating depth perception. Dysfunction in any of these muscles or their nerve supply can result in misalignment of the eyes and visual disturbances, such as double vision. We will start our presentation with a detailed description of the rectus muscles. The origin of each of the four rectus muscles, medial, lateral, superior, and inferior, is a common anatomical structure known as the annulus of sin. This annulus is a tendinous ring located at the posterior aspect of the orbit, near the apex of the orbit, where the optic nerve exits. This shared origin point offers a stable foundation from which each rectus muscle projects forward, attaching to specific areas on the sclera. The course of the rectus muscles is a key aspect of their function in eye movement. From the annulus of sin, the rectus muscles extend anteriorly through the orbit. Their path is somewhat linear but also shows a slight curve to conform to the shape of the eyeball. As they proceed, these muscles are enclosed within the muscle cone, a space defined by the arrangement of these muscles around the optic nerve. This spatial arrangement within the muscle cone enables each rectus muscle to exert its specific action effectively, contributing to a wide range of eye movements. Upon approaching the anterior part of the orbit, the rectus muscles diverge in a fan-like manner. This divergence allows each muscle to reach its specific point of attachment on the eyeball. The rectus muscles, with their distinct insertion points on the anterior sclera, demonstrate an intricate anatomical arrangement that plays a critical role in ocular motility. The arrangement of these insertion points forms a pattern known as the spiral of Tillot. This spiral pattern underlines the varying distances at which each muscle attaches to the eyeball, tailored to facilitate their specific actions, the medial rectus muscle, inserting approximately 5.5 mm from the limbus on the medial side. The inferior rectus muscle, with its insertion about 6.5 mm from the limbus on the inferior aspect. The lateral rectus, attaching roughly 7 mm from the limbus on the lateral side. And the superior rectus muscle, attaching at approximately 8 mm from the limbus on the superior surface. The strategic insertion points of the rectus muscles provide the ideal control for precise eye movements, allowing smooth motion in all directions. This is important for tasks like tracking objects, reading, and stable vision. Their arrangement also aids in binocular vision, essential for depth perception and spatial awareness. Let's now delve into the description of the oblique muscles, starting with the superior oblique. This muscle originates in the superomedial quadrant of the posterior orbital wall, specifically from the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. Its point of origin is strategically situated adjacent and superior to the annulus of sin, and also lies superomedially to the origin of the superior rectus muscle. The course of the superior oblique muscle is characterized by two distinct segments, each with a specific function in eye movement, a direct part, this initial segment of the muscle originates from the superomedial quadrant of the posterior orbital wall. The muscle extends approximately 30 mm, running forward along the superomedial corner of the orbit. It is situated between the superior rectus and the medial rectus muscles. As it progresses, it approaches the trochlea, a unique pulley-like structure, marking the transition to the next segment of its course, which is the reflected part, this segment is primarily tendinous and crucial for the muscle's function. 
Upon reaching the trochlea, the muscular body transforms into a tendon, approximately 20 mm in length. The tendon passes through the trochlea, causing a significant change in the direction of its course. This redirection is a key aspect of the muscle's functionality, as the tendon then adopts a posterior, inferior, and lateral path towards its insertion point on the eyeball. The superior oblique muscle maintains a close anatomical relationship with the superior rectus muscle, passing beneath it. After coursing through the trochlea and redirecting posteriorly, the tendon of the superior oblique muscle fans out as it approaches its insertion point. It attaches specifically to the superior surface of the sclera, within the suprotemporal quadrant. This strategic placement of the insertion, being slightly posterior and lateral compared to the insertion of the superior rectus muscle, is crucial for the muscle's functionality. The inferior oblique muscle, distinctively the shortest among the extraocular muscles, features a unique origin not shared by its counterparts. Unlike other extraocular muscles that typically originate from the tendinous structures at the apex of the orbit, it arises from the medial orbital surface of the maxilla, lateral to the nasolacrimal duct. This singular origin underscores its uniqueness within the ocular structure. The muscle extends posteriorly and laterally from this point, taking an oblique path along the inferior surface of the eye. It notably passes between the orbital floor and the inferior rectus muscle, then wraps around the infralateral aspect of the eye. This trajectory, distinctly different from the other extraocular muscles which begin by passing anteriorly from the orbital apex, positions it beneath the lateral rectus and allows it to insert into the posterior surface of the sclera, between the superior and lateral rectus muscles. Its insertion on the posterior infralateral surface of the eyeball, near the macula, is strategically placed to facilitate its primary actions. The muscle's path and point of attachment are vital in its role to counterbalance the actions of the superior oblique muscle. The extraocular muscles, each with its unique set of primary actions, work in concert to enable the full range of eye movements. The lateral rectus, specialized in abduction, this muscle moves the eye away from the nose. It plays a key role in lateral gaze. The medial rectus, responsible for adduction, it moves the eye towards the nose, facilitating medial gaze. The superior rectus, a multifaceted muscle primarily elevates the eye, upward movement. It also contributes to intorsion, inward rotation of the eye, and adduction. This muscle's action is particularly important in upward gaze and when the eye moves towards the nose. The inferior oblique, this muscle elevates the eye but, unlike the superior rectus, also extorts, rotates the eye outward, and abducts, moves the eye away from the nose. Its unique action complements the superior rectus and is essential in upward gaze, especially when the eye is turned laterally. The inferior rectus, it depresses the eye, downward movement, contributes to extortion and adduction. The inferior rectus is vital for downward gaze and when the eye moves towards the nose. The superior oblique, this muscle primarily depresses the eye, assists in intorsion and abducts. Its actions are crucial for downward gaze, particularly when the eye is turned away from the nose. The superior oblique's role is significant in intorting the eye, which is important for stabilizing visual fields when the head tilts. Together, these muscles allow for complex movements such as tracking moving objects, reading, and scanning our environment. They are also integral to maintaining binocular vision, ensuring that both eyes move in a coordinated and aligned manner. Dysfunction in any of these muscles can lead to disorders such as strabismus, where the eyes do not align properly, affecting vision and depth perception. The blood supply and venous drainage of the extraocular muscles are integral to their function and overall ocular health. The primary arterial supply for these muscles is derived from the ophthalmic artery, a branch of the internal carotid artery. This artery branches out into several muscular branches that are responsible for supplying the muscles. Specifically, the inferior muscular branch supplies the medial, lateral, and inferior rectus muscles, as well as the inferior oblique muscle. In addition to this, there are lateral, medial, and superior muscular branches that cater to the corresponding rectus muscles. Besides these, the anterior ciliary arteries also play a significant role in the vascular supply of the rectus muscles. These arteries, mainly arising from the muscular branches, crucial for delivering blood to the anterior segment of the eye and the associated muscles. Venous drainage of the extraocular muscles is primarily facilitated by the vortex veins. 
These veins are pivotal in collecting deoxygenated blood from the eye muscles and channeling it into the ophthalmic vein. The ophthalmic vein, in turn, drains into the cavernous sinus, a significant venous channel located at the base of the skull. The oculomotor muscles receive their nerve supply from three cranial nerves, the oculomotor nerve, this nerve is pivotal in eye movement, innervating most of the extraocular muscles. It supplies the superior rectus muscle, which elevates the eye, the medial rectus muscle for moving the eye medially, towards the nose, the inferior rectus muscle that depresses the eye, and the inferior oblique muscle, assisting in the eye's elevation and external rotation. The trochlear nerve, uniquely innervating the superior oblique muscle, this nerve enables the muscle to depress, internally rotate, and abduct the eyeball. And the abducens nerve, this nerve specifically controls the lateral rectus muscle, which is responsible for abducting the eye. Paralysis or dysfunction of any of these extraocular muscles can lead to paralytic strabismus, a condition marked by the misalignment of the eyes. This misalignment is particularly problematic if unilateral, often leading to diplopia, or double vision. Such issues can disrupt the coordinated movement of the eyes, which is fundamental for binocular vision and depth perception. In conclusion, the intricate structure and function of the extraocular muscles constitute a fundamental aspect of human vision and eye movement control. Situated within the orbit, these striated muscles are categorized into four rectus muscles and two oblique muscles, each with specific roles in oculometricity. The horizontal rectus muscles, comprising the lateral and medial rectus, are dedicated to controlling the eye's side-to-side -side movements. The lateral rectus muscle, essential for abduction, moves the eye away from the nose, allowing for lateral gaze. Conversely, the medial rectus muscle, responsible for adduction, moves the eye towards the nose, facilitating medial gaze. In contrast, the vertical rectus muscles, the superior and inferior rectus, are versatile in their actions. They are not only involved in moving the eye up and down but also contribute to various aspects of vertical and oblique eye movements, owing to their complex interaction with other muscles and the eye's position in the orbit. The two oblique muscles, the superior and inferior oblique, add another layer of complexity to eye movements. They aid in the rotation of the eye and work in tandem with the rectus muscles to ensure smooth, coordinated movements in all directions. These muscles are intricately linked with the cranial nerves, the oculomotor, trochlea, and abducens nerves. This connection forms the basis of the oculomotor system, a sophisticated network that enables precise control of eye movements. This system is not just vital for basic functions like tracking moving objects or reading but also plays a crucial role in maintaining binocular vision and depth perception.